beginning, you needed to know how to program in order to configure your electric vehicle controller. However, thanks to the good folks of Open Inverter, they have made significant changes and starting in version 3, they've added something called a serial menu. This menu now allows us non-programmers to make changes to the controller to calibrate the throttle, set our torque, and configure other settings. In this video, I will show you how to get to that menu. But first, years ago, when you wanted to design a circuit board or build a circuit, you used something called a breadboard. Some of you may remember this from electronics shop back in high school, back when we had things like wood shop and auto shop. Anyway, we would use resistors and capacitors and LEDs and hook them all together and make the LEDs LED and the motors motor and the uh, fans fan. In 2005, Modern Romans decided to improve on the 60s breadboard design and took it to the next level. The name Arduino comes from the bar at which they came up with the idea. It was named after an old Italian king. So what is it? And what does it have to do with the price of tea in China? The Arduino project, as it is called, started out as a tool for students learning electronics, but has since evolved and now allows both novices and professionals to create all sorts of devices and projects. It includes two things, hardware and software. The hardware is comprised of circuit boards with controllers on them. The boards allow you to connect all sorts of sensors and devices to it, like motors, fans, temperature sensors, motion sensors. Possibilities are endless. Hmm, can you think of an idea for a project? So can you guys spot the similarities? It appears that the VCU runs the exact same Atmel microcontroller as the Arduino boards, or at least some of them. I don't even know how to say it, the AT-SAM3X8E, whatever that means. The point is that one could say that the VCU is nothing more than an Arduino board on steroids. So now that we've learned that the VCU is essentially an Arduino project, it makes sense to go and download the Arduino software. Earlier we talked about how Arduino is made up of two components, the hardware and the software, and we discussed the chips and the circuit boards. Well, the other part of it is the software, which is called IDE. That stands for Integrated Development Environment and it's essentially a notepad on steroids that allows you to write and edit code, which, by the way, the Italian's called Sketch. So code written in Arduino is called Sketch or Sketches.
I'm not going to go over downloading and installing the software. That is something you can do on your own. It's pretty basic and straightforward. Once the software is installed, we simply click on the Arduino shortcut on the desktop and that launches the application. When it launches, it opens a new sketch. You can just ignore what it says on the screen. It just, it just wants you to start coding a new project, something we do not have to do. We connect our VCU circuit board to the computer using a standard USB cable. At this time, you may learn that there are two different types of USB cables. Some are designed only for charging, where others are for charging and sending data. If you're having difficulty having your machine, your computer, recognize that there is a circuit board connected to it on one of the COM ports, try a different USB cable. Sometimes you will be prompted whether you want to allow a device to connect. I'm not going to lie to you. As you make the connection, things could go smoothly or Arduino may put up a fight. You may have to do some Googling to figure things out. However, if things are going smoothly, here are the steps you should follow. Inside the Arduino IDE program, click on Tools, then click on Board. You want to make sure you select an Arduino DEWEY board. Next, you want to go back to Tools and click on Port and see which COM port shows as there's something connected to it. The COM port number doesn't matter. Pick one that shows there's something on it. Hopefully it says Arduino Dewey. Then the next thing we want to do is actually launch the serial monitor. This is what we have been waiting for. I like to do that by simply clicking the icon in the upper right hand corner. Click it and a serial monitor will open. But we're not quite there just yet. There's two more things for us to do. On the bottom, we want to make sure we select the correct baud rate. 115200 is the baud rate we want to pick. Next to that, we want to make sure we select both new line and carriage return. This will ensure that data comes through in readable fashion. Okay, finally we are ready to communicate with our VCU. Click inside of the top bar to the left of the send button and type question mark and hit enter. This should bring up the menu. I'm not going to go through every item on this menu. Damien does a much better job in one of his videos. However, I just want to show you how to get to this part and use a couple options. The first option we're going to do is lowercase d. We would do the same thing as when we type the question mark. However, prior to typing it in there, I like to clear what's on the screen by using the clear output button lower right hand corner. I do that because I like a clean canvas. Otherwise, it writes the data below what's already there. So clear what's on the screen, type lowercase d, and hit enter. This will bring up the information that it reads from the inverter. Since we only have the circuit board connected by itself and it's not connected to the inverter at this time, we're going to get a bunch of zeros. But at least we, you can see the values it would have reported had it been connected. Let's bring up the configuration data next. For this, we're going to type a capital D. This menu is case sensitive. First, clear the output so you get a fresh, clear screen. Then type capital D and hit enter. Now we should be looking at information that we can configure or have already configured. So here is what we would see our throttle values, what gear we are in, selected direction means what gear we are in, neutral, drive, reverse. We can select high or low gear.
for 99.9% .9 of the time we're going to be in high gear and the only time we would toggle this is to see what it does. I am not even going to hook this up, this feature up in my implementation. Below that we would have our configured torque. Those values have to be set something higher than zero in order for your motor to spin. I will probably do another video in more detail about these settings, but for now I just want to show you how to get to here, use it, and get out.